Hello, this is Lori Michelle with the program Running on Love with God. I'm here in Israel broadcasting and with my co-host Anna Marie in Chicago. Hi, Anna Marie. Today's program is about depression. What is the cause of depression and is there a cure? Depression plagues many people around the world in record numbers and suicide is a growing problem around our world. I read a statistic from the CDC that suicide is the number two cause of death in young adults. Crazy, where did this go wrong in our world that people are resorting to such a thing as suicide? And why is there so much depression? So we'll explore this conversation of depression and suicide, a deeply troubling topic that plagues many people and many families around the world. I'm gonna turn the conversation over to you, Anna Marie, because you're a great uh, interrogator. <laughs> And you can ask me a lot. Yeah, you, you asked some of the best questions, questions that many people have on their minds. So I'm just going to turn it over to you. I'm going to start by asking the title question directly. What is causing the rise in depression? You've documented that there is a rise, but why? I don't remember either we didn't talk about depression and suicide 30 years ago or else there's a whole lot more of it. There's a lot more of it. There always has been problems with depression and suicide. It's an age-old problem, but it's a growing problem, and it's affecting young people in record numbers. If you have the, the picture that I posted on social media, I posed a question, and uh, let me get my glasses, and I said, depression, your soul knows what your mind has forgotten. God is calling, time to remember. And there's a young man sitting on the ledge looking like he's ready to jump and end his life. Um, Anne-Marie, you can take the picture down because I want to address that. When I was awakened in April of 2009, my life careened out of control. People didn't understand what was happening to me. I knew fully well that the voices that I was hearing were divine and God himself. But in this world, when you hear voices, you're immediately carted off and told that you're mentally ill and you're put on drugs. So this was very depressing and immediately I refused the drugs and I had refused the diagnosis and I went immediately to my rabbi because I knew that this was holy and it was divine and it was my life coming to fruition. This is something that has always been inside of me my whole life. But many people are less fortunate than me and don't reach the right way. And they fall prey to the world of mental health and diagnosis and diagnosis codes and drugs. And sometimes the drugs are necessary but a lifelong incurable diagnosis is not the right way to proceed with your mental health. And so what is the cause of depression? You have forgotten who you really are. And we just did a program on mental illness and I posed the question, what is the source of mental illness? And Hashem God has made it very clear that the source is spiritual. So if you treat it strictly biological, meaning physically with drugs and physical intervention, you're missing the source of the problem. When you're depressed, you have forgotten why you're here and who you truly are. You're not your flesh and bone. You are a spiritual creation of God himself. You come from him and you're placed in a vessel called a body. And when we're here, more than ever, we are beginning to associate ourselves with our flesh. I read today on social media that young people, the source of mental health problems is coming 
number one, the number one social media site that is causing young people mental health problems and depression is Instagram. I think I forwarded that to you in preparation mm -hmm. for this program. And the reason is people are posting pictures of, of themselves in bikinis, of they're with their boyfriends, they're having fun. And so people, young people are comparing themselves to others. I don't look like her. I'm not as thin as her. Body image. I'm not as pretty as her. I don't have a boyfriend. It's all about things and what people think of us and how we present ourselves to the world. And it's all a picture. But that's not who we are. Who we are truly cannot even be photographed. It's concealed, like God is concealed. So the number one source of depression is you have forgotten who you are. And when I was awakened and my life was careening out of control and people were saying false things about me that I can't hear God. Well, of course, we all can hear God, but some of us can hear physical, not physical, spiritually with our spiritual ears, voices. They're real voices. And it's misdiagnosed. And when I was being told things that were untrue, it was causing me to be sad and in despair and setting my life in a roller coaster ride that one morning I was awakened to Hashem's voice and he said to me, if you only knew who you really were, you would never be sad. And so I pose that question to you and the audience that if you really knew who you really were, you would never be sad. You would live on purpose. You would understand that you are spirit and a creation of God, the most magnificent creation in all the universe. And you're here for a purpose. And that purpose is to bring godliness and goodness into this world, into this physical world. So how do we get from where we are to where you say we should be? If we accept that we are spirit and our purpose is to bring good, how, how, does, how do you get yourself out of a depressed state and into a more giving state? As I, as I said in the other program about mental illness, I'm not totally against medication and medical intervention when it's necessary. Sometimes people are completely dysfunctional and they don't want to live. And so how do you speak to someone who you can't even reason with? There's, there's no way to approach them. They won't even get out of bed to take a shower. I understand that there are times when a doctor's intervention may be necessary, but that's not the answer or the cure. You can't drug yourself into well-being. You can drug yourself to a state of functionality, but you still need to do the spiritual work and the understanding of why you're here and who you truly are and live on purpose in order to live a joyful life. And it is possible. And it is possible to eventually remove yourself one day with a doctor's care, of course, from medications, it's not the answer. It may be a solution temporarily, but the answer is God. And our world has moved away from the recognition and the acknowledgement that there is a God. There is a God and it is a He, and He is the master and the king of all that there is. It's true. It's not a wild tale written in storybooks. He's really the real deal. In your introduction, you said that you could help us understand how you know that Hashem is real. How do you know that you're really hearing his voice? I lost my physical ears, Anna Marie, and I 
was distraught beyond belief. I'm an outgoing person. I'm in sales and marketing. And I was running my own business, a breadwinner for my family. And I was going physically deaf. But what it was replaced with was this uncanny ability to not only hear Hashem God, Him, and I can share with you how I know it's Him and it couldn't be anything else but Him, but I also hear people when they've crossed over. He brings them to me. He is my gatekeeper. I am completely protected by God himself. No one can talk to me without his permission. And he's always right there with me when someone comes to me, including my own father who passed away in 1985. I hear and speak to my own father. So how can I help you understand? I have this miraculous gift that I want to share. I've been trying for eight years. It was not well received. I didn't understand what I was hearing from the day one. I knew it was holy and divine. But when you awaken to a spiritual awakening, there are many voices that you hear. You hear, you may hear Hashem God. But he's not the only voice that's available to a spiritual awakened person. And there are many negative, evil, terrible voices that you should never listen to. As a matter of fact, it is against Torah law to reach for the dead. And there are many people who are spiritually awakened who have made it a profession to share the voice of people who have crossed over. Very dangerous, excruciatingly dangerous. I can tell you stories that would literally make the hair stand up on your head. Very dangerous. It's a dangerous activity. Without God's laws and God protecting you, it's not for the faint of heart. So how can I share with you that God is real and I know it's him? It couldn't be anything other than him. He is pure love. I not only hear him with my spiritual ears, he shows me visions all of the time. And the first thing that I did when I had my awakening was reach for Torah and Torah law to insulate myself and to learn what am I hearing? When you are awakened, Anne-Marie, and you start hearing things that are not physically in the room, it's, it's an, an imbalance. You don't know. You're, you're, you're straddling two worlds, the physical and the non-physical, and you don't know who these voices are. And it's very dangerous. So I learned over many years what I was exactly listening to and hearing. You can't prevent it. You can try to mask it and take medications, but it won't interrupt and stop those voices completely, especially when it is the voice of him, the one, God. No matter how many drugs they tried to pump through my veins, his voice was loud and clear and strong. And how do I know it was him, Anna-Marie? Pure love, pure strength, pure wisdom. Don't you worry. We'll get through this. When it's something other than him, you can hear instinctually the difference, but that's not enough. I learned over these years to discern, and I know exactly when it's him, and I know exactly when it's something else. And he is always present in my life, always. He is the number one presence in my life. And he talks to me constantly. And others don't even come near me. They won't even speak to me 
without his permission, as I said. So how do I prove this? I literally cannot prove it. I can just share. And it's up to you to listen to me and to listen to the wisdom that I share and you decide. And as you said once to me, you said, Laura, you know, it doesn't even much matter if I believe you're talking to God. The things that you say are wise and healing and smart. So, no, I yeah. can't, I can't literally exactly. prove it. I can just share. All right. So let, let's have a little more sharing now. Um, getting back to the subject of suicide, is suicide a sin against God? And ha can someone who has committed suicide be welcome in the world to come? He just said yes and yes. So Okay, can you so talk a little news, bit more? Bad news, or bad news, good news. Yes, it is a sin. And for those who do commit suicide or if you're listening to this and you're contemplating suicide, do not do it. <laughs> do not do it because you think you're ending horrific pain and it's somehow a destination on the other side that's more desirable than where you are. But I can assure you, I have heard people after they've committed suicide. He has brought people I know after they've committed suicide and they are more depressed, more humiliated than they were when they were here. When you are dead, God forbid, you are now awake to who you really are. The source of depression is not knowing who you really are. When you die, you suddenly have all of those memories flooding back. And you are awakened to the fact that it was a supreme honor and privilege to be here in the physical world, in your body. And what did you do? You ended your life. It's a humiliation that I do not wish on any human being. What I wish for people is to wake up while you're in your body and understand that he is real, he is watching you, and every single thing that happens to you is on purpose and for your good. My deafness brought me to my knees in despair. And what did I do? I reached for him and my deafness which was my worst nightmare, led me to my biggest honor and my supreme gift. So you-, you Is suicide- Yes, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, I was just gonna ask, is suicide ever justified? And I'm thinking of cases where people have a terminal illness and they're in great pain and they're about to leave this existence anyway. Is that okay? He says no. Oh, shoot. He says no. He says, it, passing is at a time of his decision, but there is one caveat. He just brought up 9-11. And when 9-11 happened and those planes hit the towers, people had a choice whether they would burn to death or leap to their death. And they took the power into their own hands. They knew they were going to die. Horrible. Uh, those images of the people leaping out of the towers. But, and, the, and then, I know. and then there's, um, of course, the story, the biblical story of Masada, where Jews were held up at Masada, which is here in Israel. And rather than being taken by the Romans and killed by the Romans, they took their own lives. They, they committed mass suicide. And he says that was forgiven. But most cases of suicide are not okay. All right, so 
then I assume that as assisted suicide is like double the sin or double. I mean, the person who's assisting is just as culpable as the person who wants the assist. He says true. Okay. Yes. I'm getting yes. This is not my answer. Okay. It's his answers. Um, there are situations when you're dying of cancer, and I've seen it, I've lost people, and they will put you on a morphine drip to um, alleviate the pain, and eventually it speeds up the process of leaving. He says that's, he used a Hebrew word, besetter. He said that's okay. You're on your way out. They know you're on your way out. There's no, there's no saving you. So, okay, but you know, you're not I, allowed I to take those decisions. I, th I think every individual okay. situation is unique, but um, suicide is not good. Okay. Okay, so when you gave some ideas of how to help ourselves if we're feeling depression, is it possible to help someone else? If you see somebody else descending into a state and you worry that they might commit suicide, what can we do to help? You need to talk to them. You need to try to help them realize we need to have a, an entire worldwide awakening. What do I mean by this? I mean, it's time, Anna Marie, to understand that we are children and creations of a creator. And suicide, when you decide that your life isn't worth living, you have forgotten your purpose and where you come from. You're completely absent of the knowledge that you are a creation of God and you're being tested and watched. And before you got here, you had an identity. You, you might be something, someone, someone in the ghetto who is feeling hopeless may be the reincarnation of Martin Luther King. And he doesn't know it. And he's here specifically to stand up and bring world peace right now. But he's feeling depressed. Nobody loves me. I don't have money. He's completely void of the memory that he was the great Martin Luther King in a previous life. That's how embarrassing, humiliating it is when someone ends their own life because they lost their job, they lost their girlfriend, they don't feel, they gained 20 pounds and they feel too fat and, and they look ugly. I'm just going to end. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but there are situations like this. I'm not exaggerating. There are people because of their body image, because of their love life, because of their financial life, they're ending their lives. And they're completely unaware that they're surrounded in love. And God is watching you. And you've made a covenant with him to come here, and right now, all of us collectively have a purpose. And our purpose right now, in these end of days, Anne Marie, is to work for peace on earth, to come together and heal ourselves and heal our problems, heal depression, heal jealousy, heal anger, heal all of those emotions so that we can come together in peace. Because that's where we have our personal power, is to work on ourselves. If you give up, you give up your God-given privilege to bring peace here. And when you're depressed, and I was, many times you're using the word I too much. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough friends. I am not, I, 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 I. If you twist it around and turn it around and say, someone else needs my help, 
what can I do for you? And you are more concerned about your mother and father. You wouldn't harm yourself if you were more concerned about the people around you and how they would be affected. So you need to be more outward like God. If you're having financial problems, there's someone who's sleeping on the street. So if you turn yourself outward and you're more concerned with other people and helping others, you'll lift your own soul by doing that. Okay, can you do that? How do you instill that in your children? You mentioned that young people are committing suicide at a very alarming rate. How can you make sure that your children are, that they understand their value, that they understand that problems are temporary? One of the greatest gifts, again, was going deaf, hearing God, living a secular life, where maybe my children weren't sure there was such a thing as God. And faced with a crisis in my family, all my children reached for God. When I tell you how important it is, I'm speaking from personal experience. Reaching for him is what we are here to do. It will save your life. It will bring you joy and purpose. If you live a God-driven life, he has given us a prescription on how to be joyful and how to lead a beautiful life here on earth. He created us and he gave us a user's manual. And most of the world is completely oblivious to this knowledge. So how do you help your children? Wake up. He's real. Learn. That's what this is all about. Now, I can't prove to you that he's really here talking to me. You're going to have to reach inside of yourself and ask yourself the right questions. Why would a lady from New Jersey walk away from her all-American life? her SUV, her diamonds, her friends, everything to live in Israel and to do this and put my life on the line. Why? You know, sometimes I ask Hashem and I say, hardly anybody's listening to me, Hashem. I'm just, I can't stop, but, you know, I don't know if anybody's going to listen. And he said, keep going. This is why you're here. And this is why we're here. There's our okay, I'm hearing that. Two minute warning. There's our two minute, two minute warning. All right. So can you summarize, wrap up the show with simple steps that we can take toward better mental health and or how we can help others who might be suffering? So however you want to take that. One of the most successful addiction programs in the world is the 12 step program. And the first step in that program is belief in a higher power. It's not an accident that that is one of the most successful Alcoholics Anonymous, the 12 step program, one of the most successful programs in the world. You must reach for God in whatever way you feel comfortable, but you must learn the ways of Hashem God. And there are ways that people are unaware of prescriptions, prescribed life practices that will help. But the very first thing that we need to teach our children is that you are a creation of God, that everything that we see and touch is not all that there is, that you have a divine purpose and that you need to reach outward and love someone else more than you're thinking about yourself. Why? Because it comes back to you like a gigantic boomerang and it will knock you out. The more you give, the more you will receive in return. It's the opposite of what you think. 
We don't need to receive more. We need to give more. And at the end, it comes back to us a hundredfold. And that's how he is. And that's what he's testing us about. He's testing us to see what we're made of. He knows what we're made of. We have forgotten. It's time to remember. Thanks for joining this program of Running on Love with God. And now you can visit my new website, lorimichelle.net. And if you have problems and issues and concerns or questions, you can schedule a personal meeting with me at lorimichelle.net. And all the proceeds are donations to the charity of World Peace, Running on Love. Because if we listen and learn and work for peace, we have a shot at enjoying, enjoying peace on earth in our time. God bless you. May there be peace on earth. God bless you.